Hi Summit Kids, thanks for joining me for Kids Church. We're gonna review our big picture question. Who's in control of everything? Well, God is in control of everything in heaven and on earth, and nothing is outside his good plan. I want you to think about that and remember that nothing surprises God. Some events surprise us, right? But nothing surprises God. I want you to think about that as you hear our story today. Jacob had 12 sons, but Joseph was his favorite. Jacob's other sons hated Joseph. One day, Jacob sent Joseph to check on his brothers who were tending to the sheep. The brothers saw Joseph coming and they made a plan to get rid of him. They sold Joseph as a servant to some travelers going to Egypt. Then they convinced Jacob that wild animals had killed his favorite son. <laughs> Jacob was very sad. Meanwhile, the traveler sold Joseph to an Egyptian officer named Potiphar. The Lord was with Joseph and made him successful at everything he did. Potiphar put Joseph in charge of many things, and Potiphar was happy with him. But Potiphar's wife lied about Joseph, accusing him of doing something he didn't do. <coughs> Potiphar was angry, and he put Joseph in prison. God was still with Joseph and blessed him, even in prison. God gave Joseph the ability to understand the meaning of dreams. Years passed and Joseph was forgotten in prison until Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had two dreams. He sent for Joseph. Joseph explained the dreams. Egypt was going to have seven good years with plenty of food, followed by seven bad years of no food. Joseph told Pharaoh to save food during the good years to be used during the bad years. Pharaoh realized that God was with Joseph, so he made Joseph second in command in all of Egypt. Joseph stored away food during the good years. Then, during the famine, people came to him to buy grain. One day, Jacob sent ten of his sons to Egypt to buy grain. The brothers came to Joseph and bowed down. Joseph knew who they were, but they did not recognize him. When Joseph was ready, he told his brothers who he was. I'm Joseph, he said. Don't be afraid. God sent me here so I could save your people, a remnant from the famine. Joseph's brothers went home to bring all their family and belongings back to Egypt. Jacob hugged his son Joseph and they cried. Jacob's family was blessed in Egypt, but Jacob got older and died. Now Joseph's brothers were afraid Joseph would punish them for what they did to him. Joseph said, you planned evil against me. God planned it for good to bring about the present result the survival of many people. Joseph comforted his brothers and spoke kindly to them. God had a plan for Joseph's life. He allowed Joseph to suffer in order to rescue a whole nation. God planned for Jesus to suffer so that many people from all nations would be saved. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Jasmine from Plover, Wisconsin ask, Some girls at school have been saying mean things when I walk past them. What should I do? Oh, Jasmine, you know, first, I am, I am so sorry that as you walk past girls in school that they're saying mean things. That, that is not right. That is so wrong for them to say mean things about you. You know, I want you first to remember that, that you're made in the image of God and God made you just the way you are. And because God, a perfect creator, made you the way you are, then you're perfect because God made you. So I want you to remember that. You know, second, it, it may be important for you to tell an adult 
that people are saying mean things about you so that you, you feel safe in school. And so if you, if you need to, talk to an adult about that and talk to an adult quickly. I also want you to consider, Jasmine, this as an opportunity to share and to show Christ. You see, people talked about people in the Old Testament. They talked about Jesus Christ in the New Testament of the scripture. And what we want to do is we want to be Christ-like. You know, we can't control what people say and what comes out of their mouths, but we can control our responses to them. You see, you see, Christ tells us how we ought to respond when people say and do mean things to us. And he tells us we should, we should still care for them and we should still love them. And so the challenge for you and even a boy or anybody else in that school, when people say mean things about them, is to respond like Christ will respond. And so the Bible tells us we, we should love people even if they say mean things to us. Now listen, that is going to be difficult. Trust me, I know. People have said mean things about me before and I still have to love them because the Bible tells me to love them. And so just maybe, just maybe, this is an opportunity for you to remind yourself of the gospel, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for you and that he calls you and that he keeps you and that he, and that he loves you. And it's also an opportunity for you to either share or reshare the gospel with these girls who are saying mean things about you. Now listen, I don't think mean things are, are that, that the girls have cornered the market on saying mean things. As a matter of fact, I'm a boy and I've heard mean things come from boys' mouths as well too. And so boys, if people are saying mean things about you, I challenge you to do the same thing. You should love them and you should tell an adult if you need to and you should respond by telling yourself the gospel and then sharing the gospel with them as well too. Because God loves us and people will often say, mean and untrue and even hurtful things to us, particularly when they're not loving the Lord God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, and with all their strength. But that's how the Lord tells us to love him. Now, people will say untrue things about you, but you need to look in the scripture and see, what does the Bible say about me? Because what people say about you sometimes will be wrong. What you may see in the media, it will be wrong. The things they tell you to do and to buy and to become a part of, they will be wrong. Many of them will be lies. But the Bible will always tell us what is true and what the Lord thinks about us and what he requires of us. So what are some of the true things God says about us in the Bible that we need to remember? My name is Abby. I'm 11 years old and I live in Japan. I've been here for a little bit more than a year now, but I've lived overseas for all of my life. In May, we were supposed to go on vacation with our grandparents, but because of the coronavirus, we couldn't do that. Um, so I just had the money that I saved, which was $32.20. You know, it's really hard for 11 year olds to save money because we can't really get jobs. But then a couple months ago, we were praying for the INB missionaries that they would have enough money and that they would be supported during coronavirus. And so I had an idea. And my idea was, why can't I give the money that I have? And so I gave it to my mom. And then she asked some of her friends if they would also join me in giving their $32. And our goal was that we could get 100 people. <laughs> but that just seemed so impossible because I don't even know 100 people. Hi. 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 Hello, Abby. I'm Paul. You girls introduce yourself. I'm Kai. I'm Lily. We have uh, called with some really big news and some really good news. So far, there's been 155 people who have given <laughs> because you gave and because you started challenging other people to give. There are a lot of folk who have given to the IMB for the very first time. Well, they decided they wanted to be a part of what God was doing. Uh, and uh, they're our new givers and new supporters at the IMB. And we're so grateful for them and so grateful for the way you challenged them. As it's all been added up so far, do you have any idea how much has come in? No. <laughs> because you gave and asked other people to give right now, we have received over $13,000. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. 
And we know that people around the world will hear the gospel because of the generosity of Abby and of those who have given to the Abby Challenge. Even if what you have to give is just really small, like you, you, all you have to do is give it to Jesus and it's not your job to make it into a whole bunch of money or a whole bunch of whatever you're giving, it's just your job to give it. It's announcement time, and I just want to let you know that if you come to church, we're going to be practicing our Christmas performance song. Our Christmas performance will be on December 19th, so I hope you can come to church and practice our song with us. While our time together is over, I hope you have an awesome week, kids. Bye!